welcome. You're watching In The Loop. I'm Crystal Park. Our guest today is Council Member Roger Berliner. Roger, thanks so much for being with us. Always a pleasure. Roger, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started in uh, the public service. Uh, how did you, what was your interest in becoming a council member and how was uh, your journey getting here? Well, it was a long journey. I came to the Washington region back in 1972 at the height of Watergate and I was lucky enough to find an internship as a speech writer for a congressman running for the United States Senate, Nick Galifianakis against Jesse Helms in North Carolina. But I was here at a moment in time in our nation's history when big people did big things, standing up for truth and justice and everything that you want out of your government. So it was very inspiring. And then I was fortunate enough to land a job with a congressman. Uh, and so then I became a legislative director to a United States senator. Uh, I served literally at every level of government, the Carter administration, the California state legislature. Uh, I represented L.A. County for many, many years as their lawyer. So this was part of who I am. And at one point in my life, I said to myself, I need to find out if what I meant to do is to be in service myself in this way. And I felt I'd live a life of regret if I didn't find that out. So I was approached by people at a special election when there was a, a woman on the council who died of ALS, uh, Betty Ann Kroenke. And they approached me and said, please run in the Democratic primary. And at that time, I was running Bill Bradley's presidential campaign in Maryland. So I stepped aside from that and uh, took a shot and was soundly defeated. Uh, yeah, but six years later, I knocked on the door again and uh, I became a council member. So it was, it was not something that I did in my youth. In my youth I served uh, in a different capacity than I had my professional life and my married life and raising children. And then I got to a place where I said, I need to find out if this is what I'm meant to do. You're right, that was a long journey. It was a long journey. But it's a long answer one. too. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, this past year you served as president of this council. What are your top three most proud accomplishments as president this year? Well, I think the hardest work we did and the most important work we did was the minimum wage. It was an issue in which there was competing points of view. There were competing truths, as I like to say, and reconciling those truths took much, much of the year. Uh, but I'm proud that we got that work done. I'm also proud of two initiatives that I helped launch, which was our hunger initiative in Montgomery County. We estimate we have 78,000 people who do not know where their next meal is coming from. So I had sponsored legislation to create a hunger plan. That plan was presented to us and it was a good plan and we were able to fund additional programs to help seniors and our children in particular address hunger issues that they have. And lastly, I also felt very strongly about pedestrian safety. Um, had some people killed in my district. We have people that have been killed throughout our county. Uh, and so I sponsored legislation to create Vision Zero, which is uh, an aspirational goal to eliminate all deaths. Uh, we don't call them accidents anymore. We call them crashes because they are so preventable. So we got a Vision Zero plan this year as well that people are very pleased with and we're beginning to implement that. So those are three aspects of my presidency that I was pleased about. On the flip side of that coin, uh, what was something that proved to be difficult to you? Uh, what issue um, to, that you tackled this year? Well, I, I'll go back, if you will, to the minimum wage because that really dominated so much. There were some, such strong, passionate views for the advocates because people working in Montgomery County for $11.50 an hour, you can't get by on $11.50 an hour. You can't get by on a minimum wage. So there are people that are working two, three, four jobs, you know, trying to raise a family, and it's just so terribly difficult. On the other hand, we had small businesses come to me and show me their books and say, Council President, if you pass this at this pace, we will go out of business. We will lose our business or we will have to lay people off, reduce the number of hours that they work for us because we cannot afford this. It's not like we have some big profit margin here. We are on the edge. And so reconciling those, working with the communities, working with my colleagues, trying to come up with compromises that were satisfactory 
took a lot of work and was very emotionally difficult work. Um, but we got there and we were able to, as a result of the compromises that we struck, pass it on a nine to nothing vote. And a measure of that importance, uh, that's what it deserved to be, a nine to nothing vote. Well, the minimum wage bill um, is a perfect example of how involved um, residents can be in the council and it's a great way for residents and council members to have dialogue. I've, I'm sure you've done a lot of that this okay. year. Is there anything about this county or its residents that maybe surprised you? Well, I will tell you, my presidency really overlapped with the first year of the Trump administration. Nothing is the same. And it was an extra layer of complexity to our council's work and to our community that was very difficult. Um, people are angrier than they've ever been before. There have been threats that have been made. People are angry on edge and um, the Trump administration actually of course in opinion of many of us fed into that uh, we had more hate crimes than we've ever had before so holding the community together was a challenge and listening to the pain of the community was something that was very important and then to a certain extent leading the resistance became important as well that here in Montgomery County our values are so strikingly different than the values that the president seems to espouse. And so to stand in that truth, to gather our community, to protect our community, and then to make sure that on issues that I've fought my entire life for, like the environment, that we say, no, in Montgomery County, we're going to continue to go forward and address climate change. So everything changed, literally within a month of my becoming. So the Trump election proved to add some difficulty to your work. Absolutely. To all of our work, to our lives. Uh, since you've been on both sides of the aisle in terms of um, serving in public office and, and serving those who serve in public office, uh, perhaps there are some things that the average citizen doesn't realize about being a council member. Mm. Um, what is one thing that maybe you'd like residents to know um, that maybe they don't know, maybe it's more difficult than they think about being a council member? I just had a conversation last night with somebody who served in Virginia for a brief period of time, had been an advisor to elected officials and he was in public life for six years and he said that was enough for him. It's hard work. A and I'm, I'm not trying to whine or have people take pity, but it is hard work, particularly now. It's the hardest it's ever been. Uh, and I've been involved in this work again for over 40 something years. Um, so it's hard work, it's complex, nuance matters. Not everything can be reduced to a bumper sticker. Uh, and um, so, and to hear truths on both sides and reconcile those truths. That to me is the most challenging part of this work is to understand, yes, that person has a legitimate point of view and so does that. How do we bring those together? And so that's how I've tried to do my work and if you do your work in that way, it makes it harder because you're, it's more complex. So um, it's, it's hard work and important work and what I would say to our, our public is local government matters the most. It touches your life the most directly every day. So we have a public that fixates on the Washington Post, which it should of course, and the federal scene and often doesn't appreciate Montgomery County's role in their quality of life. So my hope is over time, particularly with this Trump administration, people realize that the resistance starts here, that local government is what you need to spend your time on because it's what touches your life directly every day. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned some of the areas that you're most proud of doing uh, work in this past year. Um, what are some issues for next year that you're looking forward to either continue or perhaps introduce? Well, so one of the pieces that I've been working real hard on was the hunger piece and the advocates in the nonprofit community came to me and said, Councilmember Berliner, would you do that same work on poverty? 
one of the things that frustrated me on hunger is that the county had never adopted an official policy, if you will, that said, we're going to tackle this. We're going to set a goal of reducing hunger in our county by this amount each year and own it, if you will, as an issue, not just give grants out to nonprofits to do this work, but to say this is a county responsibility. So they came to me and said, would you do that same work on poverty? Because we do have growing poverty in our community. And so it is something that I've taken very seriously. I've had three round tables with the leaders in our community when we have great minds in our community and our nonprofit world. And we're working towards establishing that same sort of legislative framework where we create a context in which we tackle poverty seriously as a county issue and develop a strategy for it. So that's one of the things that I've been very much involved with. The other piece that I was involved with last year as president of the council, but before that as chairman of the Washington Region's Council of Government is Metro funding. And so our county is so dependent on Metro being what it should be, returning to what it should be, and having a quality of service that it used to have 40 years ago. And we need funding for that, dedicated funding for that. So my hope is that uh, I've been working real hard to create a context in which we get funding for, for Metro. So, and plus then we have environmental initiatives that we need to continue to work on to make sure that we're addressing climate change in our county. And finally, I'd say the schools is so terribly important and school construction dollars are so terribly important. So even in a fiscally constrained environment which we find ourselves moving into, we need to address overcrowding in our schools and we need to address the achievement gap. So those are the things that occupy my time well, we look forward to seeing uh, in what direction the council moves on those topics. Uh, last question for you, Roger. Any words of advice for incoming President Hans Riemer? <laughs> Based on your experience this year? No, I am, I'm confident that uh, Council President Riemer will do a good job. It's a job that does require a lot of time. It requires having conversations with your colleagues as often as you can to make sure that you know what's going to be controversial, what's not, and to make sure that we work things out to the extent we can before we're publicly debating the matter because th those kinds of debates can turn directions that you really don't want. So you always want to find common ground if you can beforehand. Some issues you just have to play out. Um, but you want to know those well enough in advance so that you are scheduling the council appropriately. So it's just engaging our community, thinking big, and having this body do the work it does every day on behalf of our residents. Well, we thank you and the rest of the council members for the work that you do. We're very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Thanks for being with us today on In the Loop. You've been watching In the Loop. I'm Crystal Park, and our guest today was Roger Berliner, council member. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you.